Good morning, and an early morning it is. Welcome back to the channel. This is day two or part two of our, our Scottish adventure, and I'm really excited today. Really excited because today we're off to Scottish wildlife hides. Um, if you've not seen them before, uh, check out their website. Absolutely fantastic. And why I'm really, really excited for today is we're going into a hide that was featured on Autumn Watch. Um, and I, I'll, I'll read you what they said about the hide because it's really quite interesting. Okay, so the Sparrowhawk hide was featured in Autumn Watch 2015 and has got to be one of the best nature hides in the UK. So it's that, that's quite a... Uh, you know, an accolade to, to claim. Chris Packham was blown away with this place and raved all through the series about Mad Max. Mad Max is, the, is their sparrowhawk and he described this sparrowhawk as not only as the best bird on the planet as a species, but the best bird in the world as an individual. Now I'm not so certain that Mad Max will still be there, uh, 2015 was quite some time ago, but there is still sparrowhawks visiting and also um, we've we've got um, some other visitors as well. So we've got um, jays, great spotted woodpecker, nuthatch, siskin, goldfinch, lesser red uh, red pole. So lots of different birds, um, and, and I'm really looking forward to it. I enjoy a day in a hide. You know, it's it, it's quite a a lazy way to photograph. You know, you wait for the animals to come to you rather than what I'm usually doing, which is moving around and searching for the animals. Um, but it should be something very excited and in a hide that claims to be the best in the UK we'll certainly see, I've been in a few so we'll certainly see so come along for the journey and see what we see So we've arrived at the hide it's all set up. Alan's just given us a, a full run through with everything that we need to know and where to focus on and the various different perches and, and what we can do with this. We're really fortunate today. We've got the full hide to ourselves. There's 10 different spots, multiple hides that we can go into. So yeah, really exciting. Um, there's not a lot of light at the minute and it's going to be quite dark in here. So I'm going to be probably quite limited with how much I can get film wise from inside the hide. Um, as it gets a bit brighter, if it gets lighter, I, I will do, but I can't, obviously I can't use the torch because that would draw too much attention to inside the hide. Um, so, fingers crossed. Let's see what we'll see. Alan was explaining to me there is two sparrowhawks that visit. One is an adult male, uh, it's about seven years old, and the other one is a juvenile male. And he said the juvenile male comes in and sits, but he doesn't never he never takes any of the bait that's put out for him. He's an ab absolute hunter. He arrived about 15 minutes ago under the reflection pool. I've tried to get some video of it, uh, which I'll pop up on screen now, but it was very dark under there, so it was very difficult. Um, and he just watched and watched and when he first arrived all the little birds disappeared and then slowly but surely they gained in confidence and built and built and more and more came and more and more came and I was watching the sparrow hawk the whole time and he was just becoming more and more switched on until like a bolt of lightning he flew into amongst all the little birds I, I don't know whether he got one or not I don't think he did and then he shot off back into the woods I mean, way too fast for my camera skills, but absolutely incredible experience to watch.
<clears throat> so the juvenile has been back again um, same strategy sat underneath the reflection pool hide um, I managed to get some decent video of it this time and uh, it sat there and it just watches and it just watches until the small birds real, you know don't see it as a threat anymore and they, they build and build this time though what it did was very different it flew in and um, it landed on the, the branches that Alan's put out over the top of the seed and it, in effect it trapped a small bird underneath because the small bird couldn't leave because it was sat on the top and then there was a bit of cat and mouse where they were just kind of eye, eyeballing one another and I managed to get some photographs of it at that point quite high ISO because there's not a lot of light yet um, and then and then the small bird made a break for it and at that point it chased it and I'm fairly certain it caught it um, incredible to watch it absolutely incredible just a couple of things about the sparrowhawk really the uh, the male is 22 percent smaller than the female so it's only quite a small bird um, and as a result the, the the males predominantly chase small woodland birds um, when most people see sparrowhawks um, with kill in their gardens at home or with pigeons um, in urban areas it's often the female that can take those bigger birds that the, the male with it being much smaller um, it, it's not quite capable of, of tackling, although they do, um, but they're predominantly small woodland birds, but they are built beautifully to catch small, uh, small woodland birds with them being quite small and compact, can fly in amongst the branches very, very quick, have an incredible turn of speed. Um, and then the, 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 those talons, they are huge, designed to pierce the chest of the small bird and kill it quite quickly. Um, so yeah, they're, they're absolutely a, a, an awesome predator. So I just want to really quickly talk about settings. Um, the, the thing about woodland hides is invariably there's not that much light. And with it was also being in Scotland and we're still in winter, there isn't a lot. So you're having to sacrifice shutter speed to try and keep your ISO down. So a lot of the shots I've been getting today have been much lower than I would normally photograph birds at. So I've been sort of using between 200th of a second to 640th of a second. Um, and by doing that, I'm able to keep my eyes out. It's still high, it's still in the thousands, but it's not it's not ridiculous. If I was photographing birds with, when the light was good, I would always want my, my shutter speed to be above a thousandth of a second. Um, you get much more keepers doing it in that way. The minute you start to slow your shutter speed down, you you risk losing images and so there have been a number of jays that have come into the to the hide um and i've been photographing them they're very twitchy so a number of those will be soft um, and we've had a couple of visits from the, the great spotted woodpecker and again that they're, they're always moving um but i think it's a sacrifice worth making to keep your, your iso as low as possible 
by bringing that shutter speed down. I'm also shooting wide open at f4 um, when I'm photographing the larger birds that, that can be an issue because obviously you want as much to be in focus as possible but again I need the light that's available so the wider I have the aperture the more light is, is being uh, exposed to that sensor so I think shooting wide open is the right thing to do in this situation. So as a birder as well as a photographer I thought it'd be important to just give you a couple of facts about the sparrowhawk because it's quite a unique bird of prey. Um, the female is about 25% larger than the, the male and can be twice as heavy. So the sparrowhawk that I photographed at Leeds Wildlife Hides um, was a female and the one that we have here today is a male. Um, so I, I'll put a picture of them both side by side on the screen for you and you can see they look very very different. Um, but one of the things that I find really interesting is that um, it's, it's more prevalent in the male is, they, is that they have this counter shading and the counter shading is where they are darker on the top and lighter underneath and that allows it to um, camouflage itself when it's flying so if anything that's flying from above it looks down and it's dark anything that's looking from above from below looking up it's light and we see this on lots of um, predators around the world probably the most notorious is the great white shark which again has the counter shading exactly the same dark on the top and light underneath um, so it's just these little facts I think that, that make them just a really really interesting bird of prey well at the start of the day Alan told me that there were two males that visit the hide two male sparrowhawks a juvenile and an adult and the adult was the one that, that it's seven years old the average life expectancy for a sparrowhawk is four years so it's you know it's doing really really well um, and he said the, the juvenile will come in and it'll just chase the birds and that's exactly what it's done all day long it's just in and out in and out chasing the small birds um, the adult is the one that I've been really looking forward to because he, he lands on the post at the top and, and gives us the best chance of uh, photographing them in that portrait in that posing portrait look that we, were, that we all aspire to try and get he's made us wait all day we're literally just thinking about packing up and, I, and I, I turned to Jen and I said it's just a shame that that adult uh, sp sparrow hasn't arrived and as the words left my mouth he appeared he appeared and he he stayed with us he's been with us for half an hour I would say um incredible absolutely spectacular um I've got photographs now of both male and female sparrowhawks and I don't think I'll ever get photographs as good as the ones that I've got across the two days that I've been photographing them. Breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking, stunning specimens, um, beautiful, beautiful species. Uh, I'm over the moon, absolutely over the moon. So if you haven't given um, Scottish Wildlife Hides a look, uh, there will be a link in the description. And if you're in the Dumfries and Galloway area and you want some fantastic opportunity with, with some of the wildlife, I can thoroughly recommend them. Alan is brilliant. You know, he, he, he meet, meets you first thing in the morning, sets everything up for you, goes through everything with what you need to do, and then he just leaves you be, which is, for me, exactly as I'd want it to be. I'm certain if you needed any more additional support, he'd be there. I know he does... Um, some some um, workshops where he, he works with you um, but there's not just this hide there he's got lots of different hides um, and at different times of the year we've got different species that are on offer so check the website out and have a good look um, it's certainly something I'm going to be coming back to in the future so I'm going to wrap the video up there if you've enjoyed it please click like if you've uh, not subscribed yet why not 
please subscribe cost you nothing does wonders for my channel um, if you want to pop me a comment in the comment below i respond to every comment so until next time ta-ra